Hey folks, Matt from writeoftheimage.com. We got a viewer writing in with the question. Actually, his headline on the email is, here's a challenge. I'm always up for a challenge. This is Scott writing in. He says, Matt, I'm an ex-pro shooter from the 70s and sold my Nikon film gear to go digital in 2000. He says, brackets, I sure wish I had kept my old Nikkor glass. Uh, then and now, my specialty is shooting motocross. Eight years ago, I bought a Canon 50D and 18 to 200 and battery grip. My main area of dissatisfaction is my hit rate. The autofocus on that camera is a little hit and miss, so sometimes I miss the shot. I've always wanted to upgrade, and I'm thinking 2018 will be the year. So multiple questions. Full frame or crop sensor? Crop sensor has been working fine for me so far. Below is a four-page spread I did for VMX Magazine in Australia. DSLR or mirrorless? Your thoughts on frames per second? I think uh, my 50D shoots at 6 frames per second, so 10 frames per second or faster would be nice. Here are the cameras I'm considering. If I stay Canon, a 6D Mark II, or wait for the 7D Mark III. If I go Nikon, D750 or D500. Mirrorless, Fuji X-T2. I'm unique in that I like a super zoom, so I do not have to carry multiple bodies or lenses in the field. Also, I hate using a monopod. I handhold everything. For your information, I know Canon makes an L-Series 28-300 that I would consider ideal for a full-frame body. And I know Fuji makes exceptional lenses, and their 18-135 to would cover 90% of my needs. I'd love to stay on budget around 4000 for a body, battery, grip, and glass. Short-term, I will keep the 50D as a backup second body. Long-term, I'd like to get a second body in glass. It's just not feasible unless I win the lotto. Thank you and your thoughts. Oh, and this is a great photo. I'm going to include it in here. I'll put it in so you guys can see it. Um, it's got some great work here. So um, thanks for your question, Scott. I'm just digesting this. Uh, a lot of questions, a lot to think about. Full frame versus crop. You're saying crop's working for you. You're obviously going to be able to get a better price on um, the camera, that you, the cameras that you're looking at if you go with um, a, a crop. Although... In Nikon, you're looking at the 500, which is probably going to be as expensive as the 750. Uh, the Canon 6D Mark II, um, probably going to be around the same price as the 7D Mark III. Difference there is that the 7D Mark III is probably going to outperform the 6D Mark II for autofocus. It's 7D series tends to have very good autofocus. It's like Canon's top-notch um, pro body for, for an APS-C sensor. So I guess um, my thoughts... Uh, if I was looking at these cameras you're looking at, I would go, personally out of all of those, uh, would probably go with the... Now, now, th now this is based on the fact that you're shooting uh, motocross and, and fast-moving stuff. I would probably go with the D500 or the D750, both of which are going to give you really good high ISO ability so you can get your shutter speeds up. Uh, especially if you're using super zooms and, and slower lenses, um, and superb autofocus systems. Um, both of those both have a better autofocus system than the 60 Mark II has. Probably on par, uh, the 70 Mark III would probably be on par when it comes out. Um, the Fuji X-T2, it's a great, great option as well. Um, and I wouldn't dissuade you from that, but I think you have a little more lens offerings for long super zooms with the Nikon. Uh, so for me... I would either go probably D750 or D500 if I was shooting what you're shooting. If I was just buying one of these for myself, it would still be probably the D750, not the D500, because I don't shoot as much moving fast stuff, um, and I like full frame. You also have to bear that in mind. You might have to upgrade a lot more of your lenses um, if you're going to full frame when you previously have been shooting a crop sensor body. So uh, the Fuji is great too, the X-T2. I'm not saying don't. It's just um, not typically what I'm thinking of if I'm going to shoot action sports. Although the new Fujis are very capable autofocus systems, so I wouldn't let that really dissuade me. Um, all of these are decent options, uh, and I think it just comes down to maybe you getting your hands on them too and seeing what you like best. Uh, because any of these could do the job for you. Out of all of them, probably the 6D Mark II would have the weakest autofocus out of all those cameras. Um, still decent, but not as good as what will be in the 7D Mark III or the Nikon D750, the D500, or even the Fuji X-T2. Um, that L-Series 28-300 to is a nice lens. I mean, you, 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 you'll be okay and well-served um, with a 6D Mark II in that. You just might find the autofocus is not 
um, as good. You might be having the same issues that you're having with your 50D. I would probably suggest, I mean, if you're keeping the 50D, you probably want to stay Canon. And so um, if there's a way you can get your hands on a 6D Mark II and try it out and see if the autofocus is suitable or is up to what you need or want in a camera, then you could, by all means, go with the 6D Mark II. If not, then you, I would either say go with one of the, the Nikons. My preference would be the 750 um, or even the X-T2. Again, try them all out. Uh, and then, you know, um, I was going to say you could switch, but you, know, you, you kind of don't want to invest in one system and then switch later. But right at the moment, maybe the 7D Mark III or waiting for it would be the way to go if you want to wait. If not... Uh, have a look at the Canons. So it doesn't sound like you're shooting video at all. Uh, the Canons usually, you know, somebody's shooting video, then I tend to think the Canon weighs in more heavily for that. Um, but as far as if you're just shooting photography, the Nikons are um, definitely superior. Both of those bodies are superior to the 6D Mark II. And in fact, I would say the Fuji X-T2 is superior in autofocus to that Canon 6D Mark II. So um, your lens selections, I think those super zooms, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I've been shooting more super zooms myself lately. I like to leave one lens on. And obviously, you're getting some, some good shots. You know what you're doing. You're working around the limitations of a variable aperture super zoom and, uh, and taking advantage of the strengths of it. Um, let's throw it back to our viewers. What would you guys do in this situation? He shoots motocross, wants to upgrade from his 50D. He's looking at a 60 Mark II or wait for the 70 Mark III. You know, if you can wait, I think that's probably your strongest option for what you shoot in the Canon line without moving all the way into a very expensive body that's outside of your price range, like the 1DX. Um, Nikon D750 or D500 or the Fuji X-T2. What do you guys think? What, what way would you go? Um, let's hear what you guys have to say uh, and your lens selections. Um, let's hear what you would do and why. And let's help them out. A lot of times you guys will have comments or thoughts or suggestions um, that I maybe hadn't brought up and it just helps our viewers when they're trying to decide on something like this think of a point they hadn't considered or help make their decision. Again, I think the best thing to do before you make any decision is get into your local camera store, get these things in your hand, see which ones you like just from an ergonomic, tactile sense. Um, and if you can play with the 6D Mark II and see if the autofocus system is up to speed, then that may be what you want with that Canon 28 to 300. Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments below. Let's help them out. And uh, thanks for your questions, Scott. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.